Hi there. So today I want to talk about Lorentz velocity transformations. Now we've already discussed that velocities can't simply add in special relativity. This might cause an object to actually travel faster than the speed of light, which is impossible. So you can't straight up add them. You have to have a transformation equation which takes in the universal speed limit of the speed of light into account. To hammer this home, let me explain. Remember that one of the postulates of special relativity is that the speed of light be the same according to all inertial reference frames. So the sort of perfect example of this is let's say that you're traveling on a spaceship at half the speed of light. And then while you're on that spaceship, you take a flashlight and you flick it on and you point the flashlight in the direction that you're traveling. Now according to you know, classical or Galilean relativity, an outsider to your frame, a stationary outsider, would measure the speed of light from your flashlight as one and a half C because they would just straight up add the half C and C. Okay? But this is clearly impossible because it violates the, uh, one of the prime postulates, one of the two postulates of special relativity. So it's not true. It doesn't work that way. Now we can actually arrive at the correct expression for velocity transformations by doing a simple derivation starting with the Lorentz transformation equations. Now I'll do that in class. I find that if I do derivations in uh, online videos, people, people freak out. So I'm not going to do that. Um, and I'm simply going to present the equation as a result of the derivation. Now here it is. Um, let me explain what each one of those variables in that equation actually means. So what you're doing here is um, you're trying to determine the speed from the moving frame. Remember we label our moving frames the prime frames and the stationary frames the unprime frames. Okay? So we'll call S prime the frame and it's moving at a speed u along the plus x axis relative to frame S. Okay? So that's the assumption. If you uh, don't have this assumption in the initial problem, one simple solution is to just rotate it so that your coordinate system is pointing along the direction of motion of u relative to uh, s. So that, that's always something that you can try doing. Now, we use u for the speed of the frame, and we use vx and vx prime for the speed of the object moving in the frames. So Vx would be the speed of the object as measured by someone in the stationary frame, and Vx prime would be the speed of the object as measured by somebody that is in the moving frame. So for example, you might use this form of the Lorentz velocity transformation equations to measure the speed of a car traveling on the surface of the Earth, the stationary frame, from a spaceship that's looking down on that motion. Okay, so this would be a perfect example of when you would use this form of the equation. Now, if the relative motion is along the x-axis, then your y and your z motion is not altered. And so then you can say that any motion in the y direction in the two coordinate systems would give the same speeds, and any motion in the z direction along the two coordinate system would give the same speeds. But that's only if the relative motion u is along the x-axis. Now, if you look at this equation that we have, you can see a couple of points. First, if the speed of the frame u is much smaller than the speed of light, um, we can reduce to the familiar um, and maybe more sense, <laughs> one that makes more sense to you, the Galilean velocity transformation equations. So remember, we're going to start off with this equation, vx prime is equal to vx minus u over 1 minus vx times u divided by c squared. Now, what happens is, if your speed u is really low, then the ratio u over c goes to pretty much zero. And so this second term in the denominator, that vx u over c squared, that goes to zero. And then you're just dividing by one, and you end up with vx minus u again. And that's the Galilean velocity transformation equation. Now another point is that if the speed of your frame is the speed of light, if u is equal to c, then any speeds measured outside of the frame, vx prime would equal to the magnitude of the speed of light. Okay, So the speed of light then is shown to be independent of the relative motion of the frame. And I can show that here just by simply plugging in u is equal to c and going through a few simple algebraic steps. So here I start with my equation and then I get vx minus c over 1 minus vx times c over c squared. Um, well that vx c over c squared I can cancel out one of those c's so I end up with vx minus c over 1 minus vx over c. Now in the next step 
I pull the, um, the first one term, I make that C over C equals one, and then I pull it inside the parentheses so that um, the C in the denominator is on the bottom for both terms. So I still have C over C, which is one, minus VX over C, okay? And now I notice that VX minus C is minus one, um, uh, when you divide it by C minus VX. So VX minus C over C minus VX is minus one, and then I have that over C, which pulls up to the top, and I get minus C, okay? So you can see that it reduces back to the speed of light, so nothing exceeds the speed of light when you're doing these um, velocity transformation equations. Now sometimes it's more useful to rearrange that equation and have the VX on the left hand side instead of the VX prime. And this would be the case if you want to know what the speed of an object is from the perspective of the stationary frame if it's the, um, if what you're given is the motion of the object within the moving frame. Okay, and I'll do an example here right now of that application. So here it is. We have a spaceship moving away from Earth at half the speed of light and it launches a shuttlecraft that has a speed of 0.6 C relative to itself, okay? So a shuttlecraft is launched from the spaceship and the shuttlecraft um, is traveling 0.6 C as measured by the moving frame, the spaceship. So what's the speed of the shuttlecraft relative to the stationary frame, to Earth? So here I've drawn a little cartoon of it. Here's my moving frame S prime. That frame is moving with the speed of half the speed of light. And I've got my spaceship there with respect to that moving frame, right? And then there's my little tiny shuttlecraft, which is a little miniature spaceship there. And it's moving at 0.6C within the S prime frame. So identifying my variables, U here is equal to 0.5C and Vx prime is equal to 0.6C, okay? Now plugging in for my equation for Vx, Vx is equal to u plus Vx prime over one plus Vx prime times u over c squared. So plugging in those numbers there, I end up with 1.1c over one plus 0.6 times 0.5, which gives me 1.1c over 1.3, and when I divide those things out, I get 0.85c. So a, a person on Earth would measure the shuttlecraft as traveling at 85% the speed of light. Note that Galilean relativity would predict the top of this fraction right here, 1.1c, or 110% the speed of light for the speed of that shuttlecraft, obviously exceeding the speed of light, which is forbidden. So be careful. Um, if something has x and y, or x and z motion in one frame, then the total measured speed of the object will be affected. So let me explain here with a little example. Let's say that we have a, a, um, a frame S prime moving along the x-axis at half the speed of light, and then you have an object within that frame moving at one half the speed of light with respect to it, okay? But it's moving at an angle of 60 degrees with respect to the plus x-axis. So what's its speed as measured in the stationary frame, okay? So you can see here, I've got my red arrow showing the direction of my uh, frame motion, and then the purple arrow shows the um, direction of the, um, the object within the frame moving at 0.5 C, okay? Okay, so um, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to use a little trigonometry and break the uh, velocity into its component parts. So the velocity in the x prime frame would be 0.5c times cosine of 60. So that's 0.25c. And the velocity in the y direction in the moving frame would be 0.5c times sine of 60, which gives me 0.43c. Now what I would do is in my uh, velocity transformation equations, I would only take into account the um, x stuff. Okay, so that's my 0.25c right here. And I would plug that into my equation. Um, so here I have Vx is equal to 0.25c plus 0.5c divided by 1 plus 0.25c times 0.5c divided by c squared. And then um, plugging in those numbers, I end up with a Vx of 0.67c. Now that is the x component and the x component only. The y component would be unchanged from the Vy prime, okay, because the frame itself is not moving along the y direction. And so now what I can do is I can combine those in quadrature to get the total measured speed of the object in the stationary frame. And that would be C times the square root of 0.67 squared plus 0.43 squared, which gives me 0.796C, okay? So that's how you would handle that kind of thing if it's traveling at some angle. 
Okay, now to sum up, um, we've gone through motion, time dilation, so let's sum up what we've learned so far. Here's things that people don't agree on from two different inertial reference frames. Those observers O and O prime don't agree on the time interval between events that take place in the same position in one reference frame. So in other words, we have things like the twin paradox, time dilation, okay? The distance between two points that remain fixed in one of their reference frames, that's the length contraction, okay? The velocity components of a moving particle, that's what we talked about today. And whether two events occurring at different locations in both frames are simultaneous enough simultaneous or not, and that's the problem of the lack of simultaneity. Here's things that they do agree on, though. O and O prime can agree on their relative speed of motion with respect to each other, okay? The speed of light and the simultaneity of two events that take place at the same place and the same time, okay? If they take place at the same place, say, if they take place at the same place and the same time, then they'll still do that in another frame. Okay, that sums it up. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in class.